dear colleagues, uh, I would like to welcome all of you. Today we are going to speak about small round blue cell tumors of soft tissue. We shall start with epidemiology data. At the moment, this slide shows the statistics of Witzel Institute. And you can see that localization of the soft tissue sarcomas, I mean small blue round cell tumors, is diverse. They could, could localize almost in any place. The soft tissue, visceral fat, and the mean age or median age is uh, 29, 30 years. And uh, the males pre are predominant among the patients with this uh, type of uh, type of tumors. I would like to say that there has been modification and updates in the current classification. It's a new blue book uh, ed um, uh, edited by WHO. The uh, Ewing sarcoma as well as round cell sarcomas are classified according to the specific genetic rearrangements which we could determine by means of sequencing, new generation sequencing. Indeed, Ewing sarcomas are the most frequent types of tumors for this group. They are characterized with the genetic rearrangement in US say, 1 with different fusion partners. The most frequent is approximately 90%. We have rearrangements in the Chimera gene, uh, LSF1, F1. And the next one is U, uh, USF1H. And also a separate group of round cell sarcomas, which have rearrangements in uh, CIC and BCUF genes. UN sarcoma is not something that I'm going to speak into detail about within the, the frameworks of this talk. I just want to remind you that this is a tumor which is characterized with quite specific morphology. And if we speak about small metamorphic cells, then uh, this is exactly what it is, is comprised of. Without some stroma, the nuclei are with uh, dispersed chromatine without uh, nucleus. And uh, it is characterized with an expression uh, of uh, CD99 marker, which is not specific for Ewing sarcoma, but it is quite sensitive. And also, we can say that in the uh, 2020 classification, in the current update, we also have the mentioning of the adenomatinoma-like uh, uh, Ewing sarcoma, which also is associated with a rearrangement in EWSR1 FLI1 fusion. And I will talk about it in full detail in the second part of our session. Uh, excuse me, Irina Bulichova will have a separate presentation devoted to this. Ewing sarcoma is shown on this slide. You can see quite typical morphology for it. And also, I would like to say a couple of words about histochemical marker, uh, NX and uh, uh, X22. This ICH marker also uh, is associated with low specificity, just like CD99. But you can see that CD99 is a bright uh, membrane staining, and MKX222 has nucleus type of staining, so we can interpret it and we can use it as additional control. Uh, very frequently it is recommended, especially by our colleagues from abroad. Also, I would like to say a couple of words about such uh, genome rearrangement as um, uh, chromoplexia. So this is um, a rearrangement in the gene EWSR1-FLE1. 
can be a result of chromoplexia and also it can be the result of uh, some translocation. The rearrangement of uh, EWSR1 urge, uh, ERG, uh, which can be detected in 10% of cases among the Ewing sarcomas, they happen exclusively because of this uh, very complicated genome rearrangement, such as chromoplexia, uh, with the destruction of several chromosomes, which further on are linked in uh, chains of in the loop structures, and there is a chimera uh, gene that appears as a result. Subsequently, this uh, very complicated spatial rearrangement also complicates the um, diagnostics with this particular uh, tumors with this particular rearrangement because up to 50% of fish uh, results do not detect this rearrangement. Uh, um, the, the rearrangement in EWSR1 with fusion partner, but in 100% they detect the expression of ERG marker, which is a vascular marker and it differentiate, uh, differentiation of these tumors mm, must be done with angiosarcomas, and also you uh, have to resort to other vascular markers specific for this tumor, such as CD31. Also, we recommend these tumors to subject to molecular genetic testing, such as targeted RNA sequencing. As a matter of fact, the main part of this of my presentation is devoted to uh, sarcomas with CIC Dux4 rearrangement. There's, uh, they're different in terms of morphology, immune phenotype, and clinical picture. They occur approximately in the same mean age, 32 years, but also 32% of these tumors may occur in pediatric patients in children. Most frequent localizations are soft tissues of the limbs and trunk, and 12% are visceral, and only 3% um, can occur in bones. This slide shows the microscopic view of this type of sarcoma, as well as the MRI. view. So, what makes these tumors different in terms of morphology? You can see blue round small cell tumor, which has more significant polymorphism of cells. I would actually refer to it as um, moderate. The nuclei are not uh, fi filled with microdisperse chromatin. You can notice some uh, nuclei in the cells, and also there may occur more polymorphic roundish uh, nuclei. If you look at, uh, if you look harder, if you look, if, uh, if you close up, then there are rhabdoid characteristics of nuclei. Uh, they, can be visible. Now, also, I would like to say that these type of tumors have uh, um, less frequent uh, morphology, such as uh, uh, socket-like type of nuclei, and myxoid uh, stroma is visible much more frequently. Where the cells are not multiple, you can see this myxoid stroma quite visible here. How can we suspect this type of sarcoma at the stage of DIV diagnosis and I, I, uh, uh, CH? Um, so previously we thought that uh, we need to have either very weak or uh, almost negative CD99, which is uh, different from a classical uh, Ewing sarcoma, so that is it. You can see the so-called 61% of patchy staining. The 
partially the cells uh, have um, bright membrane staining and uh, others partially are not stained at all. But according to the new data that we have on, the sta on stage that appear in literature sources, we can see that in 23% of these uh, tumors we can uh, see diffuse staining and we can see CD99 as well. Also, a peculiar feature of this type of uh, tumor is uh, VT, is VT1 expression. In 90% of cases, you can see diffuse nuclei styling like VT1, and also there is surrogate uh, rearrangement. This is ETV4 uh, antibody, and you can see that in 90% of the cases, you can see diffuse bright staining of this antibody as well. So what are the peculiar features or clinical peculiar features of these sarcomas? So key uh, toxin uh, 4, uh, CIS Dux 4 uh, sarcomas are associated with poorer forecast uh, if compared to Ewing sarcomas. They poorly respond to no adjuvant chemotherapy. In 70% of uh, cases, we do not achieve significant percentage of necrosis, which for these particular tumors occur in 90%. That actually means that they are assessed just like the osteosarcomas by a house modified system and a five-year survival uh, uh, um, ranges within 40% if compared to 77% in Ewing sarcoma. So I would like to show you a clinical case from a general, uh, from my clinical practice, uh, because the, uh, despite the fact that uh, uh, we consider these uh, tumors to be quite rare, but if you uh, work in a reference center, then you uh, have samples from different clinics which are referred to you. Now you can see here uh, a malformation within the muscular structure. A core biopsy was uh, performed and uh, you can see here a similar situation, uh, similar to the previous um, to the previous slide, this is a sm blue, small blue, uh, round blue cell uh, tumor with a moderate polymorphism of the nuclear. The, um, you also see my myxoid stroma of this particular tumor. You can see, uh, if you magnify it, then you can see the uh, data even better in ICH. You can see diffuse staining of CD99. Uh, then also the foci uh, staining of FLI1. And also diffuse bright staining of ERG vascular marker. So you need to differentiate this tumor from a Ewing uh, sarcoma uh, and with ERG. And what is most interesting, diagnostically speaking, you can see bright diffuse expression of double, uh, WT1. Other antibodies which were used in deep diagnosis are uh, shown on this slide. They were negative, so that's why I'm not going to speak about them in detail. And also, we performed fish of the, uh, and we did not uh, detect any rearrangement in EWSR1 gene. So this phenotype allowed us to suppose that we uh, deal with CIC Dux4 rearrangement in the soleus muscle, and the most. Uh, important is uh, Wim's tumor expression. 
WT1. So this is one of the publications that shows that in 40 uh, cases of CIS rearranged sarcomas, uh, WT1 positive was in, in um, 38. And in classic Ewing sarcoma, we didn't have a single one. It was, it was just zero out of 37 cases. So why we needed to differentiate and know this type of sarcoma. First of all, kick rearranged sarcoma is associated with poorer prognosis, but at the moment, no adjuvant chemotherapy is not different from classical Ewing sarcoma. Subsequently, the question that we can ask um, our clinicians is whether it is optimal to have surgical correction, surgical treatment of these tumors and no adjuvant treatment. What is the role of it in these sarcomas with this type of rearrangements? Subsequently, the most important concept to mention in the end of my talk is that CIS B core and non ETS fused sarcomas, round cell sarcomas, currently are no more classified as Ewing like sarcomas. The most important morphological clues or signs pointing out the diagnosis is not typical for Ewing sarcoma uh, signs such as uh, spindle cells, nuclear itipia, as well as the stromal changes and also the uh, CIS sarcomas, uh, they have worse outcomes and we can confirm or verify the diagnosis by means of fish. Also, you should remember that not all round small cell sarcomas can be classified as uh, this type of sarcomas and uh, non-differentiated and unclassified um, small uh, round cell uh, sarcomas are still uh, among the myriad of our deep diagnosis and I should say that we should remember that such type of tumors they are known apart because they are small frequently but in some rare cases we will um, diagnosis undifferentiated sarcoma. That is it.